Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. During his weekly general audience this past week, Pope Francis continued his series of talks on Christian hope by reflecting on death, which he said is a reality that our modern civilization tends to eradicate so completely that when death comes to us or those around us, we are unprepared. Catholic News Service has more on the Pope's message from a very chilly St. Peter's Square. Siamo tutti piccoli e indifesi davanti al mistero della morte. Però che grazia se in quel momento custodiamo nel cuore la fiammella della fede. Io vi invito adesso forse a chiudere gli occhi e pensare a quel momento della nostra morte. Ognuno di noi pensi la propria morte. E si immagini quel momento che avverrà quando Gesù ci prenderà per mano e ci dirà Vieni, vieni con me, alzati. Lì finirà la speranza e sarà la realtà, la realtà della vita. Pensate bene, Gesù stesso verrà a ognuno di noi e ci prenderà per mano con la sua tenerezza, la sua mitezza, il suo amore. Looking now at news from around the country, California Governor Jerry Brown has vetoed a bill called the Reproductive Health Non-Discrimination Act that was passed by the California legislature. The bill would have made it illegal for a California employer to discipline or fire employees for their reproductive health decisions. The Alliance Defending Freedom, a nonprofit legal group that advocates for religious freedom and sanctity of life, said the bill would have prohibited churches, religious colleges and religious nonprofit organizations and pro-life pregnancy care centers from having faith-based codes of conduct with regard to abortion and sexual behavior. Alyssa Graves, legal counsel for the Alliance, said the government should not and cannot tell employers that they cannot live out their beliefs within their own organizations. More news now from around the country in a two-to-one ruling from the Fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals based in Richmond, Virginia. A 40-foot-tall cross in Bladensburg, Maryland, memorializing soldiers who died in World War I, has been ruled unconstitutional. The memorial was erected by the Schneider Farmer Post of the American Legion of Hyattsville, Maryland, to recall the 49 men of Prince George's County who died in World War I. The cross, whose construction was funded by local families, was dedicated in 1925. The government acquired the memorial from the American Legion in 1961. The American Humanist Association, a Washington-based group that represents atheists and others, filed suit against the memorial, arguing that having a religious symbol on government property violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. The First Liberty Institute, which supports religious freedom and represented the defendant in the case, the American Legion, said the decision sets dangerous precedent by completely ignoring history. The group plans to appeal the ruling. Back to the Vatican, Pope Francis met with members of the World Methodist Council who were celebrating a special anniversary. He told them that like the disciples awaiting the arrival of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Catholics and Methodists must remain together in prayer and hope so that the Spirit of God may bring about the miracle of reconciled unity. Rome Reports has more on the meeting with the Pope. For the 50th year anniversary of the inauguration of Catholic Methodist Dialogue, Pope Francis held a meeting with these leaders from the World Methodist Council. In the Vatican, the Secretary General, Bishop Ivan Abrahams, greeted the Pope with these words. As the Council, we concluded that to be one is about life. It is about being together. It's about finding new ways forward and contributing to real hope for humanity. And Pope Francis explained that these past 50 years have allowed Catholics and Methodists to overcome many barriers. Siamo grati a Dio perché in un certo senso possiamo proclamare di essere stati liberati 
dalla schiavitù, della straneità e del sospetto reciproco. The Pope reminded them that there's a fraternity between Methodists and Catholics, thanks to the virtue of the one baptism. He also invited them to deepen their unity to become a sign of reconciliation for the world. And finally in the news, the celebration of the 800th anniversary, the presence of the Franciscans in the Holy Land took place in Jerusalem this past week. The celebration included three days of prayer, reflections, music, and conference meetings. In an interview with Catholic News Service, Franciscan Father Michael Perry, Minister General of the Order, said he has seen pilgrims from many countries talk of the gratitude they felt for the way the Franciscans welcomed them and guided them, offering them an opportunity to meet Jesus, giving real witness to their Christian faith. He he said this is why in the 14th century, the Holy Father at the time asked the Franciscans to dedicate energy and personnel to care for the holy sites. Well, that's all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.